All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders, great most honor of all well, and blessings to the hopeful elect, teaching this word in all sincerity and in truth. And, um, you know, this is going to be um, a lesson. You know, why are you so worried about the other nations? You know, we who are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of are not to be worried about the other nations. Okay. Because when it comes to the scriptures concerning the other nations, the only thing that you need to know about the other nations really is that they're going into slavery or that they need to know is that they're going into slavery and that they're going to serve us in the kingdom. All right. Because, you know, time and time again, we have to keep revisiting topics like this because, um, you know, there's guys out there that just can't get over the fact that the Lord is not dealing with the other nations and he's only dealing with the nation of Israel. And he always has dealt with the nation of Israel. And he hasn't changed, all right? And that's um, the book of Malachi 3 and 6. It says, For I am the Lord, Yahweh, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So the Lord don't change, man. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Okay, and you know, the ways of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai ain't never going to change, okay? And, you know, what I'm about to do in this lesson is, Lord willing, shed some light and some edification on the fact that you know, the Lord is dealing with a chosen seed on the earth. In fact, before we continue on, let's go ahead and get Deuteronomy 7 and 6, right? Oldie but goodie, it says, For thou art unholy people unto the Lord, Yahweh thy power. And it goes on to say, The Lord, Yahweh thy power, have chosen thee, right? Have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Okay, so like you bear with me. So let me read that one more time. Okay, and the scripture reads Deuteronomy 7 and 6. It says, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord Yahweh thy power. The Lord Yahweh thy power have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So we are above all people on the face of the earth. And this is dealing with the Israelites, the same people who Moses came down from Mount Sinai to to give the laws to, the statutes, the commandments to. And it was given to the Israelites, man, after he just saved us out of the hand of the Egyptians. Okay, and that's historic and that's historically correct and that's biblically correct, according to the biblical historical accounts of what happened to us, man. You see, this is a book for us. All right, this is a book of history of, of what we went through. Our forefathers, man. Great works of our forefathers. The scripture says the, the things that are written aforetime are written for your learning. Your learning, you Israelites, man. Okay, these heathens have nothing to do with what the scriptures are saying, man. Okay, the only thing they got to know from us is that they're, gonna, they're going into slavery. They need to know who they are and that they're going into slavery, man. Okay. Because there's going to come a time, that's why the Lord said in Revelation 2 and 25 on down, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, which was the works, you know, understanding this truth and going out and teaching, you know, and, and teaching this truth once you get it, okay? Which has been taught to us from the apostles and the elders on down. But we got to overcome and we got to endure unto the end and we got to teach, okay? We got to show our faith by our works, man. The word mixed with faith. And with some people out there, you can clearly see that the, the you know the word not being mixed with faith did not profit them. Okay, like it says in Hebrews four and two. So a man, you know, an Israelite man, it's not just enough for him to pick up this Bible and read it, but he's got to be the Lord's got to be dealing with that man to open up his eyes to be able to understand it. If you constantly got a guy asking the same questions or guys asking the same questions about what about the other nations, clearly caring about the heathens then that is a man that is not concerned about his salvation. That is a man that's looking for loopholes, like the elder said. You know, that's a man that's clearly conflicted in his understanding of the scriptures and clearly conflicted when it comes to having faith and belief in what the scriptures are saying and how they're being broken down to that individual. They can't, they can't take it because their emotions are getting in the way and they're thinking about, you know, they got that Michael Jackson heal the world uh, mentality. You know, <laughs> which there's nothing wrong with. We want we want the world to be healed, all right? Because ultimately, hey, we're going back to we're we're, we're hastening the day wherein 
you know, looking for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness, which the word new in the Greek is kainos, which means refreshed. You see, Yahweh Shai is going to establish righteousness on the earth. All right. And in order for that to be established, we are going to be ruling over them with rods of iron. Let's keep on reading. And it says to him, will I give power over the nations? This is a future prophecy, right? And he shall rule them. And these are the words of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, man. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my father. So that's the message that we got for the other nations. All right. And that's the message that any Israelite should have for the other nations that believes in this truth. Because hey, these are the words of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, man. First of all, be concerned about your salvation. Be concerned about the fact that you're an Israelite man and you got a job to do and you got to go out and teach the house of Israel and give them warning. You know? The scriptures speak about that, man. We, we're supposed to be watchmen. But if it's not given to you to do so, then hey, just to leave it alone, man. Put it, put the book down, leave it alone. It's not for you. Because the Lord is only showing his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Let's go ahead and get Amos 3 and 7. And this is slightly veering off the topic of what I wanted, wanted to really get into, but I've got to get this out for, uh, through the spirit, you know, because it's all edifying, Lord willing. This is Amos 3 and 7. Surely the Lord, Yahweh power, but he would, will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Right? So the Lord only reveals his secret unto his servants, man, which are the prophets. And the prophets are here in these last days. Just like they've always been on the earth, earth cursing out great kingdoms of war, evil and pe uh, pestilence, man. Jeremiah 28 and 8. All right? But again, if you ain't of the elect, if you ain't a man of the Lord, then you ain't going to get this truth. Matthew 13 and 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Point blank period, man. Read Isaiah 6 and 9. What did the apostle Paul say in Romans 11 and 7? What then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it and the rest were blinded. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, that some people are going to get this truth and some people ain't, it just is what it is. The Lord's got to be dealing with you. Open up your mind to be able to receive it. But if you can't receive it, hey, put the book down, leave it alone, man. It ain't for you. All right? Well, it is for you, but you just can't see it. So technically, it really ain't. <laughs> you know, you're going to have to die on this side because the scripture says, all that hate me love death. All right? These words... You know, like John 6 and 63, these words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So without this word, you're just a walking dead, man. You know, you just go out there, you know, go to go to concerts like Travis Scott concerts and just live your life, man. You know, because this truth ain't for you. You know, anyway, but nevertheless, we still got to warn our people, you know, that your blood not be on our hands. You see, because yeah, and that's, that's what's going to wash your blood off of our hands. The fact that we're actually out there and we're telling you what it is and you're bucking up, getting emotional, that's a stumbling block unto some people out there, man. You know? Right, so the chosen line. So who is the Lord dealing with? So we just read Deuteronomy 7 and 6. You know, the Lord is only dealing with the nation of Israel, man. We're a holy people, a special people unto the Lord. Okay? And you had that geezer talking about, you know, on the comment board, talking about, you know... Um, I've um, mentioned Abraham and, you know, I can't remember exactly what scripture it was, but, you know, when you're dealing with, you know, the scriptures, you know, and you're dealing with our forefather, Abraham, and you're dealing with the sons of Noah, there was always a chosen line, man. All right. Even going back to the beginning, you had three classifications of men. You had the sons of God, the sons of men and the sons of the wicked. All right. There was a, always a chosen line, even going back to Adam. In fact, let's go ahead and get second Ezra's the sixth chapter. Okay. And um, I'm going to start from, um, see, this is the mindset that you got to be in, okay? Because um, Ezra, he weren't having none of it, man. He didn't care about the other nations, all right? And let's read it, man. So you gotta, you got to get into that Ezra's mindset, man, you know? This is 2nd Ezra chapter 6, verse 50, 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. And and the people also whom thou hast chosen. All right. So you even going back to Adam, there was always a chosen line. Okay. It says, All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. Okay. So the world has been made for our sakes, man. And they ain't never changed. Okay. 
despite the fact that you see the wicked in rulership right now, all right, and the wicked elites, they've been, you know, they've been given the blessing and the earth has been given into their hand. You know, the blessing of the sword, the earth has been given in, the power of the earth has been given into their hand to work their iniquity on the earth. They were just raised up to put us, you know, under, you know, in, in captivity, to put hell on us, man. Because Esau is the wicked whipping stick of the Lord on the left hand side. Okay, he's, he's a punishing tool, if you will, on the left hand side, man. All right. So let's keep on going on. It says, and what you're going to find out, really the scriptures, you know, there's two heavyweights. You know, you've got the good and you've got the, it's always a balance, man. The scripture says a false balance is an abomination. You've got the righteous and you've got the wicked. You've got the good and the bad. You've got the light and the darkness. We represent the righteous. Esau represents the wicked. The scriptures tell you that good is set against evil. Okay. In fact, what's that? Uh, Sirach, is it 33? Let's see if it's in 33. And um, yeah, and 13. It says, as the clay is in the potter's hand, right? And the master potter would be who? The Most High, Yahweh, right? To fashion it at his pleasure. Okay, so the Heavenly Father has fashioned this particular clay, meaning what? His creation to his pleasure, as it like of him best. All right? Just like you sitting on a sandcastle and as a child, and you 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 created that sandcastle as you liked it best. You wanted, you know, you wanted, you know, seven windows and you know on the top of the castle, and you wanted the door right to be on a in the center of the castle rather than on the left hand side of the castle. You wanted the you know you wanted a, a moat around the castle. You made it, you fashioned it as your pleasure, and it's the same thing with the heavenly Father. He's the ultimate director on high, man. The heavenly Father does things his way, right? He and, he, and he's mapped it out his way as he see, as he saw fit. Okay, so he fashions it as his pleasure. It says, so man is in the hand of him that made him to render to them as like of him best, right? Including man. And that's why the scripture says man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? Because the heavenly father controls us, man. All right. It says, and it said, there's no such thing as free will. And that proves that scripture proves that it says good is set against evil. And life against death. There you go. There goes that balance. The scripture says a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. Okay. You have good, evil. You have life and death. It says so is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. So look upon all the works of the Most High. And there are two and two, one against another. And that was just to bring that point out, man. Just to drive that point home. That the Heavenly Father is dealing with balance, man. Okay. And you have the whipping stick of the Most High on the left hand side. Which has been set up to punish the righteous. Okay, because guess what? We fell off. Okay, which we were set up to go off. Because remember, the Most High controls everything. Okay, this is the Most High's movie, man. Here it is. This is the Heavenly Father's creation. And you're asking the Lord, you you scoffing, you trying to find loopholes in your mind. Well, why can't you save everyone? Hey, the Lord don't want to save everybody. The Lord ain't dealing with everybody, bro. First of all, these other nations, they're just extras in the movie, man. Remember, the two heavyweights, the two opposites of the spectrum is Jacob and Esau, the righteous and the wicked. Okay, and that's how the Lord wanted this movie to play out. Okay, and this is how it is. You know, and we're just thankful to be Israelites at that, to be an Israelite man at that, man. The Wadi Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. But here it is, you scoffing and you you bucking up, wondering about the other nations. You know, there's guys out there that just constantly trip over the same thing about these other nations, man. Fuck the other nations, bro. They're going into slavery. Simple. We just read that in Revelation 2 and 26 on down. Is it not written, ask of me and I shall give the heathen for thine inheritance? These other nations are heathen, man. Right? So let's go back to 2nd Ezra 6 and, 50, and 55. It says, All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. As for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing but be like unto spittle. Yeah, like when you spit on the floor, that's what the other nations are likened unto, man. All right, spittle. On a hot day, the shit evaporates and you don't see it no more. That's what, These other nations are worthless, basically. Right? It says, and it's like in the abundance of them. So of that scripture alone, why are you concerned about the other nations? Just of that scripture alone, we should not be concerned about the other nations, man. They are slaves, man. They are going to be our slaves in the kingdom. Simple. Whatever we want. Right? They're going to build. The scriptures speak about continual employment. That's what's going to happen in the kingdom. 
Okay, the scripture says we shall take them captives whose captives they were in Isaiah 14. That's what's going to happen in the kingdom. The, richest, the scriptures speak about rule, them, rule over the nations with a rod of iron. As a vessel of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. That's what's going to happen in the kingdom. Okay. That's the future of a heathen. Slavery. It says, and as lacking the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. And now, O Lord, behold these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, right? They are reputed as nothing in the sight of the Lord. Okay, but check this out. Check the power of the Lord. You see, this is why we've got to fear the Heavenly Father. Because although they've been reputed as nothing, especially Esau, the top heathen on the earth, the basis of men, right? Ezra goes on to say, have begun to be Lord over us, lords over us, and to devour us. So these heathens have been devouring us, man. Okay, and you know what the scriptures speak about devouring. Let's go ahead and get Jeremiah 30 and 16. It says, therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. So we're about to devour them. This is the time that we're coming into, man. Okay, so we're being devoured. We've been being devoured by these other nations. And we're still being devoured by Esau and the other nations today. Mainly Esau. Okay, because the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked. We are his prisoners of war. Okay. And like I said, he's the whipping stick of the most high on the left hand side. Right? So he's our main adversary. But the scriptures speak about all that enemies make a tumult. And we are the one that needs saving from our enemies. And, and that's another thing. Yahweh Shai is coming back to save us from our enemies, man. Okay? We're the ones that need saving from them. So what the fuck do you want to worry about the heathens for? You, we need saving from them. But you there worrying about the other nations making it. Come on, bro. That's a weak mindset, man. But we understand because you ain't, you, it's ain't given to you to receive it unless the Lord opens up your mind to be able to receive it. Right? So it says, All thine adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. And all they that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. So that's what's going to happen, man. Right? And we've been, be, we've been a spoil to the Esau and these other nations, bro. Read Joel the third chapter. Sold a girl for wine that they might drink. You know, a uh, 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 boyfriend harlot, okay, giving a boyfriend a harlot, you know, the Arabs. All of these nations have had a part to play in our downfall, man, at one point or another, man. Okay, so all they that devoured us are about to be devoured. So let's go back to the Apocrypha, 2nd Ezra 6 and 58 now. It says, but we thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thine only begotten, and thy fervent lover, are given into their hands. And that's another thing. We've been given into their hands. We've been given into the hands of the wicked. Really, the whole earth has been given into the hand of the wicked. Okay? We are his prisoners of war until the Heavenly Father, you know, you know, uh, sends his son, Yahweh Shai, to come and take us out of the hands of our enemies, man. And our top en enemy being Esau. It says, If the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world, how long shall this endure? So Ezra was inquiring, man. It's the world's made for our sakes, bro. Okay? How long shall this endure? So if the world is made for our sakes, why are you inquiring about these other nations, man? Okay? And I believe it was stemming from that scripture, and in these shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Listen, bro, these nations ain't going to be blessed, bro. The, the word blessed means, to, to, you know, when someone bow down, bows down to you, man. Like the Apostle Tahar was making the example, the Rothschilds, the, the elites, the elite banking families, the one that control the Federal Reserve, you know, bank, the ones that print the money. You know, these guys are truly blessed. They can kill a baby on live TV and get away with it, man. You know, have private islands, do all kinds of rituals and get away with it. Have snuff parties, uh, 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 watch snuff movies amongst themselves and all kinds of things, man. Adrenochrome, drink babies, blood, rape babies, murder. They do all kinds of shit behind the scenes. That's the secret counsel of the wicked. Because the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked, man. Okay? Now, when you want to talk about the chosen line of Adam, yes, there was a chosen line going all the way back from the time of Adam, going all the way down, right? And because after the flood, you had the three sons, which I'm going to get into now, which the three sons, you had... You had Noah and he had three sons and you had Shem, Ham and Japheth. Okay, and the chosen line went through the line of who? Shem, which we're going to get in Genesis, right? The 10th chapter, 
which I was holding before. Um, in verse 22, it says, And the children of Shem were who? Elam and Ashur and Arphaxad and Lud and Aram. Okay. Now, when you want to deal with the chosen line, because I've got the graph up. Let me pull up this graph right here. Okay. The chosen line went from who? Let's, let's, let's uh, search it one more time because Satan wants to play around with the... Um... There you go. So this is the, the genealogy of Shem. Okay. The genealogy of Shem. And you can clearly see that Shem had the five sons, Elam, Ashur, Arphaxad, Lud, and Aram. But the chosen line went through who? Arphaxad. And as we go down, you see Eber, okay, which goes back to the Hebrew word Ibar, okay. And then from Eber, right, which the word Ibar, which means from the past, okay. And it, from, from Eber, you had Peleg, which Peleg means division, because the scriptures tell you that verse 25, and unto Eber were born two sons, the name of one was called Peleg, for in his days was the earth divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. Okay, and from after that, you then had, hang on, Selakia, I have to keep refreshing this page. And then going all the way down to Abraham's uh, grandfather, Nahor, and then you had Terah, which was Abraham's father, and then a uh, Terah had Abraham. Okay, and then Abraham went on to have who? He had Ishmael, yes, but then he also had Isaac. Now, you might get a sad nigga that come up to you and say, yeah, the Lord is dealing with... Because he might pull the Quran at you and say, the Lord is dealing with Ishmael, brother. Well, guess what, bro? Which was first, the, the Quran or the Bible? The Bible was first, and the Bible speaks about the Lord dealing with Isaac, not Ishmael, bro. Okay? And Isaac, right, had Jacob and Esau. But who was the Lord dealing with out of Jacob and Esau? Now, let's get the scripture on that. You see, the scriptures, man, <laughs> when you follow the genealogy, because you can do that, you can go, you know, you can, we just read it. We just went through the line from the line of Shem, the chosen line. Okay. And it's clear to see who the Lord is dealing with. And in the scriptures, it's consistent. You can't refute these scriptures, man. Let's get 2nd Ezra 3 and 13. It says, now when they live so wickedly before thee, thou didst choose thee a man from among them whose name was Abraham. Right? It says, him thou loveth, right? Him thou lovest, and unto him only thou showedest thy will. Okay? And made an everlasting covenant with him, promising him that he would never forsake his seed. So the seed is important, man. The chosen line, the seed, the genealogy. In fact, let's look up that word genealogy real quick. Right? Genealogy And the word genealogy means Let me just type in Definition It says a line of descent Traced continuously from an ancestor Right? A study and tracing lines of descent And what was this ch uh, chosen line of descent? It was the chosen line All the way going All the way back from the time of Adam all the way down through, which we went through it, after the three sons of Noah, through the line of Shem, all the way down through to Eber, Peleg, all the way down through to Abraham, all right? Then you had Ishmael and Isaac that were born of Abraham, okay? But then the line was not established with Ishmael, it was established with Isaac, all right? Which... You know, like I said, them sand niggas like to talk about Ishmael, but guess what? The Lord ain't dealing. In fact, let's go ahead and get to um to prove that the Lord ain't dealing with these Ishmaelites. Let's go ahead and get uh Galatians, a real quick one, just to the point. Uh, was it chapter four? And um let me start from verse 22. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by a bondmaid and the other by a free woman. Okay, because the bondmaid was who? Hagar, the Egyptian. All right, but then you also had the free woman, which was who? Okay, Abram's wife, which was Sarah. Okay, but he who was of the bondman, but he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. Okay, and a promise was established through who? To that, cho to who? To that chosen line, right? Not to Ishmael, but to Isaac. All right, so let's jump down to the point. It says, verse 28, now we brethren... 
Now we brethren, as Isaac was, are, ch are the children of the promise. Okay? But as then, but as then, he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture, cast out the bondwoman and her son. Right? I mean, that's what happened with, um, you know, uh, Hagar and Ishmael. Okay? They fled into the wilderness. Okay? It says, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman, which was who? Isaac, who came of the union that was blessed from the Most High, Yahweh, right, between Abraham and Sarah, okay? And the son of the free woman, right, would be who? Isaac, not Ishmael. It says, so then, brethren, we are not the, ch of the, we are not the children of the bondwoman, but of the free. And that's why the Apostle Paul said in Romans 9, and um, in three, it says, for I wish, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Hamashiach, from my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. So Paul is, the apostle Paul is addressing the Israelites, man, exclusively. Okay. Who to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants. Okay. We're going to get into that, man. Because you're dealing with, remember, the, remember, you're dealing with the, uh, um, the law is being given to the Israelites during the time when Moses came down from Mount Sinai. He gave them, them laws to the Israelites, man. Not to the other nations, right? And the giving of the law, there you go, and the service of Yahweh and the promises, right? Didn't we just read about the promise? Where did, hey, it says verse 28 in Galatians 4. Now we brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of the promise. Didn't say nothing about Ishmael, Okay. So that was just quickly to make that point. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into Second Ezra, the third chapter, and um, verse fifteen. It says, "And made us an everlasting covenant with him, right, promising him that thou was wouldst never forsake his seed." Okay. And unto him thou gavest Isaac. It didn't say nothing about Ishmael. It didn't say nothing about Ishmael, bro. Remember, we're dealing with the chosen line. The scriptures are very consistent and very concise with who it's addressing as the chosen people of the Lord. Okay. <clears throat> and it says, and unto Isaac thou gavest Jacob and Esau. So now you've got to get a scoffer. Oh, see, look, they mentioned Esau there. Let's keep reading. As for Jacob, thou didst choose him to thee and put by Esau. So Jacob became a great multitude. So there you go, man. Okay. So let's go back to that graph. And then, you know, through Jacob, our forefather, Jacob, you get what? You get the Israelites, man. Okay. Remember, let's pull up that diagram, the sons of Shem. At the bottom, what do you see? You see Abraham, you see Ishmael and Isaac, but the, the chosen line, the children of the promise was going through who? To Isaac. Then Isaac had Jacob and Esau, but the Most High put by Esau. And so Jacob became a great multitude, okay? Then you have the Israelites. That's who the Israel, And that's what we teach, bro. We are the chosen people of the Lord. We are, man, we are a blessed people, man. On the, Like, you know, well, we're about to be blessed. Because remember, the, the word blessed means for people to bow down to you. We're about to be blessed. We're not blessed right now, okay? But we are the chosen people of the Heavenly Father. Let me just put it that way. Soon to be blessed beyond measure. For eternity on the earth. The Lord is going to set up a kingdom that's never going to be destroyed, man. Okay? We're about to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai, bro. Okay? In fact, let's get that real quick in Romans 8. And, um, what is it? Romans 8 and 16. Right? It says, um, The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children, or the word there, sons of Yahweh. And if children, then heirs, heirs of Yahweh, and joint heirs with Hamashiach, if it be, if it so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified, may be also glorified together. All right? So joint heirs with Hamashiach, man, just to prove that point. All right? The sons of God. And it was all, the Lord was always dealing with the sons of the power, man. The sons of God. Okay? Always dealing with that chosen line. Going all the way back. To Adam, okay. Okay, so let's go back to uh, Second Ezra, the third chapter, and verse sixteen. We go to verse sixteen, right? It says, "And unto him thou gavest Isaac, and unto Isaac thou gavest 
Jacob and Esau. As for Jacob, thou didst choose him to thee and put by Esau. So Jacob became a great multitude. Okay. And it came to pass that when thou leadest, leadest his seed out of Egypt, who were who? The Israelites, man. Okay. It says, thou broughtest them up to them. Thou broughtest them up to the Mount Sinai. Okay. Brought them. Who? Who's the them? The Israelites, bro. Okay. So the chosen line. That's who Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the laws to. So you got these guys that are concerned with these other nations, bro. They ain't got nothing to do with our, our laws, the statutes. That's only given to us. Psalms 147 and 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments... They have not known them. Praise ye the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. The very fact that we can praise the name of the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, is special in itself. The Lord didn't give his name to these other nations. In fact, the scripture says the name of the Lord is dreadful among the heathen. So how can the Lord be dealing with the heathen, man? Okay, the scripture says there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. We've got to know the name to call upon in order to be saved. Okay, to believe, to be saved. These heathen... The name of the Lord is dreadful among them. So how are they going to call a name, call upon a name that's dreadful among them? Come on, bro. It don't make no sense. Okay? And the Lord is not the author of confusion. When you want to start throwing in, throwing in curveballs into the equation like that, bro, now you reaching, man. Chill out, bro. Okay? Back in uh, 2nd Edges 3 and 18, it says, And bowing the heavens... Thou didst set fast the earth, and movest the whole world, and madest the depths to tremble, and troublest the men of that age. And thy glory went through the four gates of fire, and of earthquake, and of wind, and of cold, that thou mightest give the law, check this out, unto the seed of Jacob. And we just proved that in Psalms 147 and 19. He hath not dealt so with any nation. Okay? It says, and diligence unto the generation of Israel, the generation of Israel, okay, which the word generation goes back to what, to the word gene, which means what, seed, lineage, okay, let's look up that word generation, okay, well, we looked up genealogy, let's look up generation, generation, it says, This ain't giving me um, Let me go into the etymology of the word Because I know you got the word In generation The beginning of the word You got the word gene Which what does the word gene go back to Okay Right it says Body of individuals Brought about the same period It says Descendants at the same stage In the line of descent Race People Race What does the word race go back to it comes from the Latin word, I believe, is raza, which means what? Seed. Species, progeny, offspring, act of procreating. The seed. How do you pro procreate? How do you uh, 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 give your offspring? By busting seed into a woman. All right? And it don't matter if I say heathen woman. Okay? But, hey, because it's the seed that counts. It's the seed that matters. Right? But even though it's the seed, hey, guess what? The, when you're dealing with, as, as a whole, as you go back to the chosen seed, we're dealing with the, we're focusing on the chosen seed. Because remember, Isaac had what? Jacob and Esau, but he put by Esau. And Jacob became a great multitude. So yes, you can, you can have, um, you know, you can say, oh yeah, but oh, but look, yeah, but Isaac's seed, he had uh, Jacob and Esau, but guess what, bro? The scripture says two nations were in Rebekah's womb. And the Lord can do that, okay? So the Lord put by Esau because he established a chosen line through Jacob, okay? Not Esau, all right? And that's the, that's the perfect line of descent right there. That's the offspring that the Lord is dealing with. A particular what? Race or kind, right? It says to give birth, beget. So you get the point. Um, familial tribal groups. Uh, yeah, you get the point. All right, so let's go back into this. All right, um, it says verse 19 
And it says, and that thou mightest give the law unto the seed of Jacob and diligence unto the generation of Israel. In fact, I'll mention the word race. Let's look up that word race real quick as well. Just for edification purposes, man. Okay. Race. All right. And the word race. It says what? People descended from a common ancestor. All right. It says from the French race or earlier Raza, which means race, breed, lineage. Okay. Lineage. There you go. All right. So, um, now when I jump to Sirach 17 and 17, get a couple more precepts and we can close it out, right? It says, for in the division of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people, but Israel is the Lord's portion. Israel is the Lord's portion. Okay? For I am the Lord, I change not. The Lord ain't never changed, man. Who being his firstborn, he nourisheth with discipline, giving him. The light of his love and doeth not forsake him. So the Lord ain't forsaken us, man. Okay. Um, right, now let's go from there to... Um, I'm going to get First Chronicles. I'm going to close out on this scripture. I think it's 17 and 21, I believe. Yep. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people Israel, whom Yahweh went to redeem to be his own people, to make thee a name of great... To make thee a name of greatness and terribleness by driving out nations from before thy people, whom thou hast redeemed out of Egypt. Didn't we just read that in Second Ezra, the third chapter? Okay. And after we got redeemed out of Egypt, you know, Moses, you know, we got brought to Mount Sinai and Moses came down from Mount Sinai and gave the laws unto the Israelites. Okay. No other nation. Okay. It says, for thy people Israel, didst thou make to be thine own people forever. And thou, the Lord Yahweh, power became as their power. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So with that, man, I pray you were edified. Ka halal Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Ba Hashem Rakak with Dash. You know, double honors to the apostles and the elders, great millstone for teaching us this truth. And shalom to the elect.